Okay. That was a very good take for 99. We have that coming up as well to close off this show. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to be spitting. Okay. Now, we're going to move on to boxing right now. As Francis Nagano and Anthony Joshua went down. Timber! Man, it was brutal. Zay, I'm going to start with you as I read the question. Should Francis Nagano continue his boxing career after a knockout loss to Anthony Joshua? I mean, I didn't mean to cut you off, and I apologize. I believe he should continue his career. Um, you fought the two best heavyweights in, in boxing right now. You fought uh, Tyson Fury. You fought AJ. I mean, those are the two best. You know, you and you and you jumped the gun. You jumped a lot of heavyweights and jumped right into it. You know what I mean? So I think you should continue that. I believe for him, for his sake, he went in there for the purse, for the big bag, which he received, um, which I know, I believe, the uh, money came back from the pay-per-views and stuff like that. So, like, a lot of people were watching and, you know, in, in anticipation and excitement that he would he would be, you know, just put on a show. And I think he should continue his career because you're not going to look sharp in your first two career fights in boxing. It's never it, No one ever does. No one's going to look sharp, clean, crisp, especially when you're fighting guys who've done their whole career at the highest of the high, at the highest levels. Um, You talk about a guy in Tyson Fury who fought Klitsch going his damn prime. And he, you know, put him out of there. Or not, not prime, but he put he fought Klitsch, y'all. You know, you talk about AJ, who fought multiple guys, you know, for many years. And people were calling him one of the, the better talents of boxing has ever seen at the heavyweight division. So it's, it's you know, it's demoralizing to lose, of course. You, you, you know, especially against uh, Tyson Fury, who I believe he beat. And I believe that he should have won. But, you know, politics in, in the game, they didn't want to put that on him. Um, And, you know, you got to... You could say embarrassed by AJ, who put on a boxing clinic against him. Um, but I think he should continue his career. I think there should be no reason why you just say, nah, I can't do it because I didn't beat AJ. Like, AJ is not the – he's not a whack fighter. He's not a whack boxer. He had a lot of potential to be the best boxer in the world, and he still could show that if he could beat Usyk and Fury. So it's going to be something interesting to see what happens, um, you know, moving forward. But I think he should continue his career. Yeah, cash grabs are ruining the sport of boxing. And what should have been uh, supposed to have been a crossover ended up or almost ending up in Francis Nagano cross, crossing over to the afterlife. That's what it almost what almost happened, right? He almost crossed the afterlife, bro. My guy was knocked out. Timber! I mean, look, man, we have to realize that when Francis Nagano fought Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury did not take that man seriously. First of all, the fight was scheduled two months or so before the undisputed fight with Usyk had to get pushed back because of how Fury had to escape that bout. I mean, look at round one. You know, Fury in that fight came out immediately through a right hand. He was aggressive. That's not how Fury normally fights to start off a fight, okay? So clearly he had intentions of just trading and not boxing, okay? And when you're trading with a guy like Francis Nagano, who has that kind of punching ability with power in both hands, you may get hit with something that's, probably going to put you on the canvas and that's exactly what happened to Tyson Fury well AJ knew all and well that okay number one Tyson Fury did not use his experience you know against Francis Nagano only towards the end of the fight when he outboxed him and won those rounds to barely edge out with that victory I'm not gonna make the same mistake I know I know the you know certain fundamentals of the sport where I can really get Francis Nagano out of here, so I'm going to take him seriously and not trade with this guy because, number one, my chin is suspect anyway. And that's why a lot of people thought that Francis had a legitimate shot to win this fight because of AJ's suspect chin that hasn't been tested lately, okay, because of the cherry pick opposition that really can't test his chin like that anyway. Well, Francis Nagano could have done it had he got to his chin, but he wasn't able to get to his chin as, um, you know, AJ is more analytical now, so he analyzes his opponents and tries to make his opponents pay off of those mistakes. And clearly, with an inexperienced boxer like Francis Nagano, who was really just here to pick up a check, you know, um, he was able to have easy answers, do basic jabs to the body. I mean, my guy Francis Nagano wasn't even protecting himself with his left hand and literally just threw a right hand right down the pipe. Easy, easy money. Knocked him out. Knocked him into another universe, okay? It's that simple. Um, He shouldn't have been in the ring. You know, these cash grabs are disrespect to not only the sport of boxing, but to humanity because um, you're expecting people to pay for this bull crap, cotton bull crap, to be exact, okay? And it's not no value behind it. 
Like, imagine somebody working, you know, 12 to 14 hours a day, okay, just to pay to watch this garbage. That ended in round two. I mean, first of all, you a fool to even pay for this fight. You know, uh, yeah, you want to see it. <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, the pay for this fight. You're stupid, okay? You got this Jake Paul and Mike Tyson garbage coming up, and they're going to be wearing headgear. Don't even have the decency to fight, you know, um, without the headgear. I mean, and we have people really buying that? Really? Like, I'm more mad at the people than, you know, what happened in this fight, but we got to talk about what happened in this fight. And, listen, Francis Nagano should have happened in there. Now, to answer the question, should he continue his boxing career you know, I'm not in the process of really telling the man what he should do and what he shouldn't do. But obviously, this is a show that we give our opinion in certain things related to sports. I do believe that if he's going to be in boxing, he's probably going to have to focus on being a boxer. OK, um, not this part time UFC and boxing because UFC is his home base. He knows the UFC. He's been fighting in the UFC at the highest of levels. OK, now I do want to make this one point of reference, Zay, as I pull up this video to show you exactly what I'm going to talk about right now. Boxers have you know better chins than um clearly UFC fighters, right? And you you probably like how do you even know that? Well, the shot that Francis Nagano got hit with and clipped with that really knocked and spark out. Andy Ruiz got hit with that same shot. I want to pull it up here for you to see for yourself. He got hit with the same shot. Like, look at this. AJ stone the right hand, boom, same shot. But guess what? He stood right there, he exchanged. Right, watch this exchange right here. Look, look, boom, caught AJ. Okay, literally one day exchange after that hit knocked him down. Timber. Okay, well, Francis Nagano was not sparked out. Look at that. Okay, that's the temple shot, not the shot that I showed initially, but that's my point. Um, Zay, okay, clearly, you know, when you're a UFC fighter trying to transfer in to boxing, you're going to be at a big disadvantage. But the question is, does that even matter? Do they even care? Or are they just there to pick up a check? And I'll leave us with that for our first lap. But, Zay, um, the second part of the question that we do have is AJ back. I'll let you answer that as well. Um, hold on. I just put this a little bit better. Um, I think he is. Um, I think he got his confidence back, Um, per se. I think he's a guy who's... um. Uh, that's all or boxers really when you're a boxer in general it's all it's majority mental because they they done they have the skill they train countless hours to get to that ring but when they end that ring how do they how do they maneuver uh, is there discipline kicking in or is it more fear fright and nervousness and i think um for a while aj was fighting with a, a certain uh infant, yeah. uh, gunshot you know and it was um it was something that i see i i, I mentioned this a lot with danny garcia when the title's on the line, he fights with a certain insecurity where I don't think he believes in himself fully to go out and win. It's more so doing, going out, out there and embarrass yourself. And I think AJ was doing the same for quite some time. And I think when he fought Nagano, you saw he was more confident in his skill. Whatever he was practicing, whoever he was training with, he felt more comfortable. And it created... um, It just created a different, different uh, regime. And I think, and I think, I I think personally, he's back. I think he, this is the most confident we've seen him since before he fought Andy Ruiz that first time. Yeah, I think for me, AJ is definitely back, and the reason why he's back, along with a guy like Joseph Parker who fought in the undercard, is because um, you know, they are proving that you can have second, you know, career rejuvenations in the sport of boxing due to activity. You know, just being active, working on your fundamentals, right? Yeah, you can argue. In AJ's case, you know, carefully cherry picked opposition to help build your wins back up is definitely going to help you out. Because when you look at AJ's opposition of late, you're talking about Robert Hellenius, who was axing for that right hand. All right. First of all, Wilder already proved the blueprint on how to beat Hellenius. Okay. He landed that right hand in round one and he was axing for AJ to throw that right hand, and AJ just wouldn't do it. In that fight until he did it and knocked him out of there. He could have ended that fight way earlier than he did. That's part of that gun shy thing that you was talking about, in which why you know the new AJ was like, oh, I'm a little spotty with him, but he could have landed that right hand way earlier than he did. And when he decided to do it, he won the fight. Okay. Then he fought um, we fought after Robert Hellenius. He fought um Odo Wileen, I believe. 
I think he fought one time before Odo Wallin, but I may be wrong. He fought Odo Wallin. He fought him at um Day of Reckoning. The guy footwork is horrible. He's flat footed, has no power, cannot test AJ's chin. Easy W. Okay. He made a living off of giving Fury a cut. Literally. Okay. He won that fight easily. Then um he just won this fight against Francis Nogano, who was clearly um not an experienced boxer, only his second fight. And a lot of people got false hope because he almost beat Fury, arguably should have beat Fury. And people was like, okay. AJ and Nagano, well, yeah, I'm going to pay to watch that fight because it should be a good fight. No, it was never going to be a good fight. So when you talk about carefully picked opposition, which Eddie Hearn is doing a very good job of doing with Anthony Joshua's career, yeah, you're going to look like that. But still, it's activity. I'd rather that than uh, Andy Ruiz, who's not fighting, hasn't fought in like three years. That's why his stock is so low, even though he just beat Luis Ortiz a couple years ago. His stock should have been higher. Then AJ's, you can argue, yeah, even after the AJ loss. But activity, Deontay Wilder, yes, he fought, you know, at Day of Reckoning where he lost to Joseph Parker, but before that was two two years. And in that last fight prior, he was around one stoppage. That's how your stock go down. And now when you lose to Parker, along with the inactivity, your stock is way down. We don't even want to see Zang in, in Wilder fight anymore, okay, because his stock is so low. So when you talk about Joseph Parker, who I think, you know, like AJ is revitalizing his career with bigger opposition than AJ. I mean, you talk about two of the dangerous punches in the heavyweight division. He fought back to back. He has found a way due to activity to stifle the power puncher. He stifled Deontay Wilder. He stifled, you know, um, Zang, even though he had to overcome two knockdowns early on. And he's utilizing good footwork. He's working on his craft. OK, carefully pick opposition, what you want to say, whatever. The Saudis taking an interest in the heavyweight division has a mm -hmm. lot to do with that as well, because they putting these good cards together. Mm -hmm. So that's increasing the activity. All that is a positive, no matter how you look at it. So AJ is back. He's in the thick of things. I do not want to see the Usyk fight again, with all due respect, if Usyk was to beat Tyson Fury, which I think is a 50 50 possibility. I think it's a 50 50 fight. But AJ is right back in the thick of things, and so is Joseph Parker, and that's due to activity. And I end there. Well, let's, let's you know we gotta be clear too. You know, boxing in general has always been uh, hand picked fights, cherry picked fights, and then you know you have the the handful, the hand picked handful of like you know major big fights. You know, it ain't like the early days, like the early days of boxing where you had to fight the top of the top early on. Like people want you to build your resume, they want you to build you up and do all this stuff. And that's probably why it happened. Now, the way it looks now, because whatever happened back in the day, every it messed up all the boxing. You know, it messed up every boxing. Like, oh, you got to fight this guy. You got to fight that guy before you fight me. So now you got you to cherry pick all this stuff just to get a great record, just to be undefeated 20-0 against the, the local Delhi people, just to, just to then get a major fight or get a title fight or get somebody. You know, not everyone's fighting. Bring fighters from the beginning to the end. And unfortunately, that's why we're seeing so many cherry pick fights and guys only fighting once a year so that they could get record could look great. And then they could fight, you know, the big fighters. Yeah. I mean, look, I think AJ and Tyson Fury is a more intriguing fight today than it was yesterday. Even though you could argue a couple of years ago, it was the biggest fight that you could make. But then it took a dip because of AJ's L's and then the Deontay Wilder trilogy with Fury. So we lost, you know, steam with that. But I think as it was a couple of years ago, I think it's building back its equity of being a fight that, you know, we would want to see. But unfortunately for fury he has to go up against a southpaw in usik twice arguably and that's not gonna be no easy task ask um aj usik could box his ass off and fury can as well and that's why it's a 50 50 fight please like and subscribe for all the up-to-date content we're, we, we've been slinging shows left and right slinging content left and right please don't miss anything if you do like subscribe leave a comment or leave a question something you may want to answer something you may have it's, all ideas are great ideas. Nothing's a dumb question.